Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and I'm back with another episode of Yarn Love, where I work with Red Heart to show off one of their fantastic new yarns. This episode, we're taking a closer look at Red Heart Huga. That's right, H-Y-G-G-E is pronounced Huga. So let's take a closer look at this yarn, see what it's made of, and how it works up. Okay, first let's take a little tour of the label. You can see here that each ball of Huga is 5 ounces or 141 grams. That's 132 yards or 121 meters. It comes in 20 beautiful colors, although the cloud colorway is the one I happen to have to show you today. If we keep running through the label here, you can see, like I said, this is the cloud colorway and there are dye lots for this yarn, which means you'll want to make sure to buy enough for your project before you begin. If we keep turning over here, you can see that it's a five bulky weight and they recommend a K hook or 10 and a half inch or excuse me, 10 and a half, 6.5 millimeter knitting needles. Also, you can see here by the symbols and the words that it's machine wash cold, gentle cycle, tumble dry low. And that's absolutely fantastic. And you get this washability because it's 70% acrylic and 30% nylon, which means we're getting this gorgeous furry yarn and it's completely non-allergenic. So if you have a wool allergy or a mohair allergy or an angora allergy, I think this this yarn is just going to be absolutely fantastic because you can see here with the fuzziness that it kind of reads like an angora or a mohair, something a really, really fuzzy yarn. But the other great thing, usually when I've used those yarns in the past, I end up basically with a lap full of angora or mohair. It just sheds all over. This yarn, I have had no shedding. I've worked up a couple different swatches, which I'll show you here in a minute, and I didn't end up with any fuzzies on my shirt or on my lap or on my clothes. So I am really pleased so far with Red Heart Huga. Now let's go ahead and take a look at those swatches. Okay, here you can see the crochet swatch that I worked up using my Furls K hook. That's a 6.5 millimeter and it is the hook size that's recommended on the label. You can see here at the bottom, I had four rows of single crochet and it's a really nice tight fabric with this fuzz. It really fills in any of those holes. With these four rows here then, I did some half double crochet right there. So you can see it's a, it's never stiff, but the single crochet is definitely a little stiffer than the half double crochet. And then I got some pretty good drape up here. I did four rows of double crochet. And I can just tell by the way it feels, and hopefully you can see a little bit by the way it drapes, that that double crochet is just a lot softer and drapier than the single crochet. So with this yarn, you can get a, a stiffer fabric if you want to do some home goods or home decor items where you want something a little stiffer, um, a little more solid, you can absolutely still get that look with this yarn and still get a good drape. Now, that said, I kept playing around and I tried a couple different hook sizes. I'll show you one that I didn't like. I tried going all the way up to, this is a clover 12 meter, millimeter and I liked the, moss stitch that I did right down here. I did sort of a moss, moss or granite stitch and I thought this looked pretty good although with weight it would pull apart quite a bit and then I played around a little bit more with some front loop only double crochets and I just felt like at this point it was starting to get a little sloppy so I don't know that I would go um, all the way up to a 12 millimeter again depending on the look I'm going for I certainly I don't think I would go any bigger with this yarn. Um, I also though the one I really, really enjoyed was when I used my N hook. So this one is a nine millimeter. Again, this one's by Furls. But you can see, this is the fabric that I played with. I did some more moss stitch. I did a little bit of, you know, mesh. And then again, I tried that front loop double crochet, and then I tried a little bit more mesh. But I really, really enjoyed the fabric that I got with the N hook. So I think that's what I'm going to use when I make my garment in this. I'm still working up the pattern. I actually just finished my gauge swatch for it last night. You can see here, this is made with the end hook and uh, front loop only double crochet. And I just really love the drape and feel I get with this. And I think it's going to be open enough to be breathable, but not so open that it doesn't make a nice, really cozy sweater. So that's what I'm working on with this yarn right now. That's as far as I've gotten, but hopefully I'll have more to show you on that soon. Now, about crocheting with this yarn. I know my first question when I saw all this fuzz was, how is it going to frog? This could be a nightmare, but I am so happy to say it frogs beautifully. I haven't had a single snag undoing any of my stitches with this yarn. It just comes off really, really well. Um, I haven't had any troubles with it sticking to the hook. Now, if you pull your, if you've got one of those sharper hooks, you can end up splitting the yarn a little bit. You can see right there, I pulled up one strand of it, but just give it a good tug here and sort of, I always do that. If I end up splitting the yarn, I just sort of pull it back and forth like that and it seems to straighten it right back out. So I haven't had too much trouble with it. 
in that regard. Um, this particular hook, I think, has a little bit sharper edge, so it tends to split a little bit more than other hooks would. But overall, I really haven't noticed any particular splitting with this yarn or anything like that. Um, it just really seems to work beautifully, and like I said, it's been frogging really, really well too. It's also been uh, very consistent. I have gone through an entire skein of this now, and I didn't see any thick or thin spots. While I have it up here, let's take another little closer look here. You can see exactly how that strand looks. We've got our fuzzies built in here, and they're just super soft and silky. They aren't, they don't read as stiff or anything at all. I've put this up against my neck and it feels really, really good. You can see it's also a twisted ply here. Like I said, if you end up untwisting it, that's when you can end up running into trouble. But if you just keep it, keep it nice and twisted there, you won't have any troubles with that at all. Um, obviously, it is also very fuzzy. That's the question people always ask, is the yarn fuzzy? Yes, in this one, definitely fuzzy, but that's one of the features. Now let me go ahead and set that aside and I can pull up the knit swatch I've been working on here. Again, I've been using the recommended needle size for this one, which is 6.5 millimeters, a 10.5 US size needle. These ones are by Susan Bates. And you can see I did a little bit of garter stitch here and then some stockinette. And I was surprised. The, the garter stitch, I really had a fair bit of stitch definition. Um, you'll notice with my crochet swatch, if I pull it back up here, there isn't a whole ton of stitch definition. The fuzziness really kind of hides a lot of that, which is good or bad, depending on the look you're going for. Um, but with this, the garter stitch, I actually had a pretty clear view. And even for the stockinette a little bit too, you can see what that looks like there on the pearl side for the stockinette. So again, with the uh, knitting, I didn't find any splitting at all. Um, and I was using metal needles and these are relatively sharp, but it really, slid right along both the metal needles and the wooden hooks and even the plastic hook, the one by Clover. It just slid really well on all of them. I had no trouble at all with uh, any sort of, you know, getting caught on the hook or on the needles or splitting really. It's been just a real joy to work with. Now, that said, it's probably not the best yarn for beginners. That's another typical question I get. And because of the fuzz, Knitting with it, maybe if you're a beginner knitter, it might be okay um, because you've got your loops here that are really distinct. But when you're crocheting with it, it can be more difficult to know exactly where to go in with your hook. If you're an experienced crocheter, you should be able to see it. But if you're just getting started, you remember how confusing that is. Being able to find those end stitches or finding the top of your stitch can be a little bit more difficult. So maybe not for right away beginners. Save it when you've got a little bit of practice, but then definitely give it a try. Um, if you're having trouble seeing your stitches in this, my best tip for yarns like uh, highly textured yarns where you do have trouble seeing your stitches is to work over a nice white surface and have bright lights like I've got right here. And even if you need to shoot some of that light up from underneath, um, little at light mini flip lights are great for that, things like that that you can sort of shoot up from underneath and really see through your stitches as you're learning to read them with this yarn. So in terms of being better for knitter crochet, I think they looks it, it gives two very different looks certainly, but I think it looks great in both and the garment I'm working on is going to be a crochet one. There are already lots of knit and crochet patterns though for this yarn on redheart.com and if you go to the link in the description you'll find a link out for this yarn as well as the tools you've seen me use here with it today and you can see all the beautiful colors. Let's take another look at those. 20 different colors that you can get with this yarn. They're all a little dusty and gorgeous and they're just super pretty. And I think you'll really enjoy using them. I know I've been enjoying it so far myself. You can get this yarn at redheart.com, which again is at the link in the description, or you can find it in your local Walmart, Joann's, or Michael's, all starting September 2018. So I hope you'll give this yarn a try. Um, I really think you'll enjoy it. I know I have, and I hope you enjoyed this video and this review. If I have qu you have more questions about this yarn that I didn't answer, please let me know in the comments. And if you liked it, give us a like, thumbs up, and uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you can see more great Moogly videos. Thanks so much for watching.